guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be making a sphinx. This is going to be my first sphinx and I don't want to do an Egyptian one. Maybe someday I will, um, but I wanted to go with more of a Greek mythology theme and then just throw in a theme that I thought would look really cool and creepy. So my idea for this piece is like a forgotten witch that lives in like a snowy like mountain type area and obviously it's still a sphinx and I want it to be a little bit like decayed and stuff so we're gonna give it a skull face and yeah anyways let's get started <laughs> okay so this is gonna be a lot of fun I'm gonna be making a human-ish type skull for the first time um, I've done creatures before but I've never done a really human type skull so let's see how well I can get this to actually look like a human skull so I'm starting off with a lump of tin foil. Um, it's more of a flatter type, kind of almost ball-like. And I'm just gonna get this covered in clay and then I'm gonna mark out where we're gonna have the eye sockets and the little hole for the nose. <laughs> So I'm not really sure if I want to make a bottom jaw or not, so I think I'm just going to go without it for now. I might add it later, but right now I think I'm just going to make the face without the bottom jaw. Now once I have everything marked out and I figure out where I want the eye sockets and the nose hole to go, um, I want to make them look a little bit more sunken in than they are. I really can't push in much more with the clay or I'll expose the tin foil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take strips of clay and I'm going to kind of go around the holes and kind of build up the frame around it to make them look like they're deeper than they actually are. Also with this I can add a little bit more expression or as much expression as you can give a skull um, by changing the shape of it and stuff. And then once I have the eyes and nose figured out, I need to figure out what to do with the teeth. So I'm gonna start building up some clay there where I want them. I'm just gonna use a strip, um, not really going to add the teeth individually. I'm pretty much just going to figure out where they're gonna be placed and then I'm gonna break up the clay into individual teeth. I figured this would be a lot easier. So I'm just going to use my tools and break up the clay into individual teeth. I don't need to go all the way back. I'm just going to do a couple of them. Um, and then I'm going to adjust the shape of where they're connected to the skull. Lastly, I just added a little bit of texture around the eye sockets and different spots on the skull and I cleaned up the edge around the base where we're going to connect it to the body. So for baking, I'm going to put our clay head in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit and while that's baking we can start on making the clay feet. Okay, so for the clay feet, I'm going to be doing the front and back feet very differently. For the front ones, we're going to be making them off of a wire frame, and then with the back ones, I'm going to be making some alterations to some resin pieces that I have. So let's get started on the front feet first. So with the front feet, I'm going to start by covering up the wire frame. I'm going to cover up the portion where all the wires are combined, and then I'm going to add some claws to the tips of each wire. Once 
once I have those claws in place, I'm then going to do a pre-bake. I'm just going to bake the clay for about 20 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once it's cooled from doing that pre-bake, we can start back up by covering the rest of the wireframe with clay. Now with the feet, I'm not going super cat-like with them, so I'm not really focused on making them really accurate or anything. I just want them to look really cool. So I want the claws to be really long and the toes a little bit spread so that you can see them a bit more. Okay, so I'm done with the front feet. Now before we bake them, I'm gonna get the back feet done and we can bake them all together. So I'm starting off with some resin pieces I made ahead of time. These I've used before for other creatures, um, mainly for my fox bats, I've used them for the back feet. Now these look really good, but I am gonna be making some alterations to them, mainly because the toes are just really tiny compared to our front feet. So I'm going to start building up some clay around the base of the foot and just kind of adjust the shape of it. And also I want to add some really large claws too that will match the claws on the front feet. Once I have the shape adjusted and I like how it looks, I'll add a little bit of texture, make sure everything is blended into the rest of the foot, that way you can't really tell a difference between resin and clay. And then we're going to bake all of our feet for about 45 to 55 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once all of our clay is out of the oven and is cool to touch, we can start on painting them. So I'm going to start with the skull first and then we'll move on to painting the feet. So what I'm going to do to paint the skull is obviously it's already kind of white. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some watered down black paint and I'm going to start painting inside of the little sockets and trying to blend it outward so it kind of fades a bit. Also, I'm just going to kind of add a little bit of black paint here and there and then wipe it away to make the surface of the skull look a little bit more dingy and dirty. Now the only other thing that I did to get more of a bone color for the skull was I added a little bit more brown and burnt sienna to kind of give it that browner, more earthier color instead of just working with black and white. I also added a little bit of white paint to my brush and lightly went over the eye socket openings to kind of uh, lighten them up a little bit and kind of draw more attention to them. And then lastly, I need to paint our teeth, so I took a bit of an off-white paint and I went over all of the teeth. Now, after I did this, I realized I kind of want to give them a gold tooth. <laughs> I, I just really want to add a little bit of gold to the face, so I'm going to give them a gold tooth real quick. And then for painting the feet, I'm going to basically paint them all a solid black color first. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to just add a little bit of gray to bring more attention to the toes and lighten them up a little bit. And then lastly, to kind of add a little bit of gold to these as well, I'm going to add a little bit of gold to the claws. So I'm just going to brush over them lightly to add some gold to the very tips of them. 
And that's pretty much it for the feet. They were pretty simple. Um, I'm going to resin over everything and make sure that they are completely cured and dried. So while those are drying, we can start working on sewing the body. Okay, so this is the pattern that I'm going to use to make our body. So pretty much you could use this to make really any kind of cat body. Um, unless you're trying for something a little bit thinner. Obviously, since we're going with more of a leopard, it's going to be kind of on the thicker side. And then the fabric that I'm using is this really pretty fur fabric that has the leopard print already on it. So we won't have to dye it or sew the spots in, which would take absolutely forever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sides of the body, which have the back leg portions already connected, and I'm going to take the inside portions of those legs and we're going to sew those together. So I'm just going to be sewing down the fronts of the back legs like this. And then I'm going to take the fabric for the front legs, I'm going to have an inside and an outside portion for each one, and I'm going to sew them down the front just like we did with the back legs. Once we have those sewn together, we can then add them to the body. So I'm going to figure out where I'm going to have those legs connect, and I'm going to cut some holes for where we're going to connect them to. So I'm going to sew the inside portion to that little hole on the bottom side and then I'm going to take the outer side of the leg which is more of like a shoulder blade section and I'm going to sew it around um, the fabric just kind of connecting it in place. Now we're going to connect our two side pieces together. So I have a strip of fur fabric. This is more of a longer gray fur fabric and I'm going to connect the two side pieces to this. So I'm just going to sew one on each side and we'll have a solid body piece after we do that. The only other thing that I need to sew right now is the fabric for the tail, which is super easy. It's just one long strip of fur fabric and I'm just going to fold it over and sew down the side and the very end of it. And then we just need to flip it right side out. Okay, so we're almost ready to put our piece together, but I'm going to go back to the clay face real quick because I want to add a little bit more detail. Pretty much, I want to add some eyes to our skull. So I picked out a pair of custom eyes that I actually made myself. If you missed it, I have a tutorial on this. I'll leave it linked down below in the description and it shows how to make your own custom eyes. So what I'm going to do with these eyes is I'm just going to glue them in place in the eye sockets. I'm just going to use a little bit of hot glue and then I'm going to take some strips of felt and use those to make some little eyelids around them. Or maybe they're not really eyelids or I don't know what they are but I wanted to add a little bit around them to make the eyes have a bit more expression than they did. Okay, so I'm finally ready to start putting our doll together. So I have a wireframe and we're pretty much just going to add everything to this wireframe, starting with the skull. So I'm going to take our clay skull and I'm going to glue it to the wire for the neck. Then we can take the fabric for the body and we can run it over the wireframe, just running all the wires for the legs through the body. I'm then going to take the fabric for the neck and I'm going to glue it around the base of our skull, just going all the way around. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I'm going to start closing up the body. So I'm going to start with the neck and I'm just going to kind of sew down the back of it, closing it up and then stuffing it. And then I'm just going to continue going down the rest of the body and stuffing as I go.
Once I get to the end, I'm going to take the fabric for the tail and I'm going to run it over the wire for the tail and sew it in place at the base of the body. So I'm just going to connect it right here. After that, to finish closing up the rest of the body, I need to start working on the back legs. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the clay legs for the back and we're going to glue them to each wire for each leg. So I'm going to get those glued in place and then I'm going to take the fabric for the legs and glue them around the bases of our clay feet. And just like with gluing the clay head in place, we're going to let that dry a little bit and then we can start stuffing and closing up the backs of the legs. And then for the front legs, we can do pretty much the same thing. The only thing different, instead of gluing the wires directly into the clay feet, we have wires sticking out of the back of them, and we're going to wrap them together, adding them to the wire frame. Then we can take the fabric for them and glue around the base of the clay feet. And then finally stuff and close them up. Okay, so we have her body put together. Now I want to add our final details. And I thought one thing that would be really cool is to give her like a full head of like witchy raggedy hair. So I have this pretty cool gray yarn that's a little bit shredded looking and I'm gonna start using it to make her a wig. Now I've never done this before, I've never made a full head of hair so we'll see how well this works out. But basically I'm gonna cut a bunch of yarn into strips and make sections and then sew them into place on the top of the head. While doing this, I also threw in a few braids here and there, and I also twisted the hair to try and look like it was in a like ponytail or something like that, kind of pinned up. Once I had the hair in place, I started decorating it with beads and just little knick-knacky things that I thought would look really cool in her hair, along with a few different colored chains. Now, no witch is complete without a cloak, so I'm going to try and sew up a little simple cloak that we can add to her. Something that can be removed so you can see all of her hair as well. So I'm going to sew this together real quick and start decorating it. For the hood portion of the cloak, I just have a left and right piece. I'm going to sew down the back portion of it, and then we can add it to the actual cape portion of the cloak. I'm just going to sew all of this together and then I want to add some decorativeness around the like fringe portion of the hood. So I have some fake leather and I want to kind of make a trim to go around it and make it look a little bit more fantasy like. Nothing like creepy creepy with the hood, just something kind of cool. So I'm just going to glue this in place and then I have a few metal little decorative pieces that I'm going to add to it. Other than that, I'm going to kind of paint and add a few decorations here and there. I want to make the cloak look a little bit dirty, so the edge of it, I'm going to use some dark paint and just go over the edge, kind of make it look like mud. And then once that's dry, I'm going to kind of cut it to make it look a little bit ragged and torn.
Okay, guys, and here is our Forgotten Witch Sphinx. I had so much fun with this piece. I'm definitely going to use the pattern again. I've been kind of improving on these, I feel. So I've been saving them up for different projects and stuff. So, yeah. What do you guys think? Also, I'm really glad I decided to give her eyelids because without them, it was kind of looking like... I don't know, like, too cartoonsy, and yeah, I think the eyelids give it a bit more of a, like, somber look. Anyways, I'm gonna have her up for sale on my website, so if anyone is interested in buying her, or any of my other creatures, because they do have quite a bit up for sale right now, um, the link for my website will be down below in the description. Also, while you're down there, I have a bunch of other links. I have my Redbubble, um, a bunch of different art supply links, so if you're interested in seeing what I use to make my dolls, you can check those out. Now, if you do buy anything through those links, they are affiliated, so it does help support the channel. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Oh, also, what do you think about my new chair? It was a birthday present. I love it. Kind of go with the like purple cyan type colors. Anyways, bye. Mm -hmm.